Hello everyone, it's your host Get Good Fox. Welcome back to State of Decay 2, the Hyper Community World Tour, where Fox is going to go to all of the bases in the game and do a casual review of them, as well as the map themselves and the landmark locations. Today, we're going to be doing our final episode in Providence Ridge, because it's time for Lundergaard Lumber Mill. Let me go ahead and bring up the heads-up display. So, right off the bat, I want to say that this base is without a doubt the most uh -oh, unique in Providence fair. Ridge and one of the more unique bases in general because of its very peculiar setup of facilities. It's the only base in the game that has access to five large facilities and that's a lot, that's a ton of large facilities. The next biggest would be four, which you would get at um, the farmland compound in Trumbull Valley, which is where we're going next. Uh, in return though, to balance it out, you only get three small facilities right here. This kind of maintains the magical number of eight. The eight seems to be, um, it's not always eight, but for these kinds of bases, it seems like when you add up your large and small facilities together, you tend to get eight. For example, if you think of Whitney Field, you got three small, or five small, three large. If you think of Farmland Compound, you got four small, four large. Over here, we got five small, three large. And that's just the pattern. Now, the issue with this base is that it has a lot of unique things going on, but I don't know how important those are, and that's why we're going to talk about it. So. Five large facilities already poses kind of an issue because, honestly, there aren't that many really good large facilities. I really had to kind of scrape the bottom of the barrel. Let's talk about the five, the, the large facilities that I don't think are really all that important. One of them is the auto shop. The auto shop, it's nice, don't get me wrong. I like having that 30% fuel efficiency, especially on this map because uh, this area right here, this big empty space, that is a humongous mountain that you cannot drive through. There is no tunnel through it. You have to drive around this mountain. So anytime you have to return to the northeast corner of the map, or if you're starting in the northeast corner of the map, because here's the tutorial base, you're kind of, um, you, you burn up a lot of fuel. So there's a lot of driving in Providence Ridge, and that's why there there is an argument for the auto shop. But the thing is, the auto shop, the main use of it is crafting your upgrade kits and bulk crafting toolkits. Remember, when you bulk craft a toolkit, be it a regular toolkit or an advanced toolkit, it's three for the price of two. Look right here. Advanced toolkit is 150 parts. So three of them should be 450, right? Because, you know, 150 plus 150 plus 150 is 450. But you only pay 300 for three. So the thing, though, is that you could just build like 100 of these and then get rid of the auto shop and just build it from time to time when you need it. Same with the, uh, the car upgrade kits. You can build them from time to time. The tune-up abilities, vehicle stealth, it's... I mean, I'm not going to say no to it, but you don't really need it. It's not worth having a, a facility there. Body reinforcement, it's not bad. You know, maybe that could help you save a repair kit here and there, but this thing is already super good at creating tons of repair kits. And once you have the repair kits, you can remove this facility. Another one that I'm not, like, super thrilled about is the sniper tower. It's not that the sniper tower is bad. For me... I have outgrown the use of the sniper tower. I've now reached a level of skill. Even when I don't, people say, you're only be good because of like the, the pyro launcher and the impaler. No, on Twitch, which if you don't know, I do play on Twitch. In fact, I play more on Twitch than on YouTube. Then you would have already seen hardcore playthroughs where I don't use the pyro launcher and I don't use the impaler. And I still succeed on lethal zone without dying. So... I have outgrown the use of the sniper tower. Now, maybe you have not, and so the sniper tower is a very justifiable um, facility to add in. But for me, I don't. I'm not too thrilled about it. And so you get into this issue that I don't really know what to do with five large facilities. And at the same time, what about my small facilities? Small facilities are actually really good. One of the things we added in was a field hospital. A field hospital is basically like a level three and a half infirmary. It's a large facility version of it. And I built it here in order to free up one of my small facilities that normally would have been an infirmary. 
Now, some of these facilities that I would always use would be like the lounge. I would always use a lounge. I would also always use a trade depot. Those are like your must-haves. That's why you kind of want two large facilities at the minimum. But going past two, it's kind of like, what else are you going to build? We could build a Haven device. Absolutely. Now, in this playthrough, I haven't done Trumbull Valley. Maybe I should have done Trumbull Valley first, but I didn't. So we don't have access to it. Now, and uh, that would have been a an option. Now, I'm not even saying that the... The Haven device is an awesome choice either, and that's because if you're not familiar with the idea that you don't actually really need to defend your bases. Remember, now, now that I'm driving away from my base, my base is perfectly safe. When you are not at your base, your base can't be attacked. So just drive away from your base and you won't need to defend it. The only time I like to build a Haven device is when I'm doing siege farming in a base like Whitney Field, where the Haven device kills all of the zombies, including the stragglers, meaning the siege ends as quickly as possible, and then you can just start up a new siege. Allow It basically optimizes your siege farming speeds. And you don't even need it for that. You could do it, but you know, you could run into an issue of like a straggler zombie looking for it. You could spend an extra 10 to 15 seconds looking for those zombies. And when a siege lasts, you know, about a minute to a minute and a half, an extra 10 to 15 seconds does make a difference. Like in the long run, you could definitely lose a siege or two in the process. But in this base, you have the problem that I, I just don't know what else to build that is relevant. I'm not just talking about, okay, obviously I built five large facilities, but I just kind of did it to fill up the slots. As far as building large facilities that matter, that make a big difference, there aren't a whole lot. So what would be the large facilities that matter? Well, like I said, you've got a lounge and you've got a trade depot. Those are the must-haves. Your base should always contain those. But what else could you build? One thing you could build is a forge. Now, I don't think the forge would be as useful in this base because the main use of a forge is to construct building materials rapidly. And, um, I mean, I'm not saying that's useless here, but chances are you probably have a good bit of building materials already, so it may not be super useful. But if you, but it's, it's an absolutely an option. You could build it because the forge allows you to convert raw parts into eight building materials. Now it's expensive, it's like 540-ish parts and one fuel. But the problem on lethal zone, and this is mainly a lethal zone solution, is there's just not enough building materials. So it's one of the ways that will help you complete your base faster. It's a, it's a way to guarantee that you're getting building materials in a timely manner. So that's an option. Another option, like I said, is the Haven device. I'm not super thrilled by it, but it's an option. You've also got the field hospital. Now the field hospital in this base I think is a good idea because it lets you free up a infirmary but the main value of a field hospital is actually to have a field hospital so with an infirmary simultaneously so that you can double up your primary care. That's how you get the 90% primary care god combo. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me go ahead and just hide real fast. So if we look right here, you can see what primary care. Uh, we get 50 health and 45 plague resistance. This combo is actually so powerful that when I showed people just how strong it was, Undead Labs like literally went freaked out and nerfed it like within, I would say, less than a month. And they dropped it from the original 50% plague infection resistance down to 45. Now, the infection resistance comes from pathology. If you also had surgery, you'd get injury resistance. But what you could do is you could activate it here in your field hospital. But if you also had, say, let's say this gym was an infirmary level 3, you would be able to activate it a second time. And so what you would get is 50 plus 50 is 100% plague. You'd be in completely immune to plague to, to the plague. In this case, you would be 90% immune, which is still very powerful. Still a combo that is worth doing. But that's an, another option. Other than that, uh, other suggestions included the Warlord's Armory. I'm not saying that, that you couldn't do that, but it, uh, it I didn't really see the value in it, mainly because 
If you like using guns, sure. The Warlord's Armory would allow you to craft all the bullets and do all the things. But on Lethal Zone, guns are not particularly great. Uh, bullets are expensive. And, uh, oh, let's buy all this this stuff. Oh, comfy chair. Definitely want that. That's really nice. Uh, ammo? Actually, let's watch our money. I, I forgot that I'm not an ultra guy, so I don't have a whole ton of money. But um, ammo is rather expensive. And uh, bullets, they're not very effective at killing zombies. Um, the only bullets that are really good are the low caliber bullets, because remember, one headshot kills a zombie, and in that case, you could just use like a repeating crossbow and save your bullets. But the main thing is fire. Fire and cars are the ways to kill zombies, because they're just cheaper. They're cheaper and more effective. So, you could do a Warlord's Armory. I would not consider it particularly optimal, but if your particular playstyle revolves around the usage of guns, which as I said, mine does not, then sure, you could probably put in a Warlord's Armory. But that's the first problem I have with the base. And like I said, we kind of went on a tangent about like uh, large facilities, but that's one of the really big standout things about this base, is the idea that there are a lot of large facilities. But what about the flip side? You only get three small facilities. That is a problem because there are a lot of good small facilities, and I've tried to cram in as many of the good ones as possible, but there's more to it than that. All of your small facilities are indoor slots. You can see here, this shaded blue area is indicating that this is an indoor location. Why is that a problem? Well, because it's an indoor location, you can't build a crafting still. And if you're not using an overpowered strategy like Ultra Cash, then your next best strategy for earning money is going to be through the crafting still for either making beer with a knowledge of alcohol, either through a character with bartending or by maxing out the, the beer community. Because when you fully complete their quest line, they will give you knowledge of alcohol. What's my... I got close combat. And that's one way that you can make good money in the game. But another another thing you could do is craft strong painkillers using uh, the crafting still to create ethanol. That's also an option. So, but the thing is with this base, you don't have that option at all because the crafting still can only be built in a small outdoor facility. So not only do you have this issue of like, man, what large facilities do I build? You also have the issue that you can't access some of the best small facilities like the, um, the crafting still. So that that's kind of like a double problem. Like it's kind of like, man, I, I, had a that was I would really like it if you gave me one less large facility and one more small facility, and please let it be an outdoor facility. That would be fantastic. Basically, a little bit more balance. Like the high concentration of large facilities, they're not really working to the lumber mill's advantage. Here's another thing that is, once again, very unique about the base, because like I said, it's not just unique that you've got three small, five large. You also get this thing right here. This would be the sawmill. The sawmill allows you to construct um, building materials for essentially free. I guess for time, it takes time. How much time? Well, it takes us about 15 minutes here, and that's with maximum morale. Uh, note that we are just barely in the highest tier of morale over here at 62. So with 62 morale, in fact, I don't believe these are really modified by morale. I think it's always going to be 15 for a large, a 12 and a half for a medium, and 10 for a small. So that's how long it takes to make three. So it's going to take you 15, let's just say, I don't know, like 27-ish, um, 37, 36, 37-ish minutes in order to make one, two, three, four, five, six materials. That's like, well, it's not great. It's not terrible, but here's what makes it worse. You're not allowed to use this ability again until another 45 minutes have passed. So you gotta do 15 minutes here, and then you gotta wait 45 minutes here. And it's true for this one as well. This is the shortest one, so this is the one that would be the most affected by it, because the, the, the time to produce the materials is the fastest. Well, you have to wait 45 minutes for this to end, this plus five zombie threat. The zombie threat, mm, don't care about that. But until this 45 minute penalty ends, you can't do this again. 
So you are producing these, basically you're producing like six building materials per day. Uh, is that great? It's kind of neat. I, and I wish more bases had these kind of unique interactions. There's no doubt about that. But is it good? Um, it's better than nothing. That's the way I would describe it. It's definitely, it doesn't light me on fire. You could do so many more things that would get you more building materials to the point that it's kind of like, you could argue, well, isn't it just a bonus? Okay, yeah, sure, technically it's a bonus, but it's just not, it's just not an insane bonus. It's just, and like the chances are good that you're not gonna activate them on time. You're gonna forget about them. Maybe you forget like 10 minutes, five minutes, maybe 30 minutes go by and you forget to do it. So it, you have to activate it manually every single time. It's not like an outpost that just automatically is just like optimally just on the dot, giving you your resources as quickly as possible. That's not really how it works. So I just don't think it's powerful enough to really be a relevant thing. Like some people, oh, what if you moved into this base and you use that to construct the building materials to build the rest of the base? Could you do that? Yeah, you could. And I mean, it, would it help? I guess technically it would help, but you could just get so many more building materials through other methods. And even though I said on Lethal Zone, it's a pain to get building materials, I, I this is just so slow that I just would never really consider it a significant or relevant source of building materials. That, that's just kind of how I, I feel about it. But um, that's really the main problem with this base. It's very unique, and I love that. I love that it's unique. In fact, I wish more, I, I wish Undead Labs would go back and change bases to be more like Lunderguard, where they do something very unique because most of the bases are just homes with facilities to fill up. This one has a unique theme. Now in this case, unique didn't necessarily equate to better, but it's interesting. Let's go ahead, in fact, let's just go ahead and start activating them. And now you can't even do them simultaneously either. You gotta wait to do them one at a time. So overall, let me talk, let's talk about what I chose to install. So like I said, lounge, trade depot, those are must-haves. I built a field hospital to save a small slot over here. And then these last two were literally just filler slots. I just didn't know what to build here. You know what would be nice? What if they had a super still, a large facility still that's even better than a regular still? That would have been awesome to have here. I think the issue is that there's not enough good large facilities to fill in here, and so I just kind of have to slap things in. What should you put in? Um, a Haven device is fine, a Sniper Tower is fine, Auto Shop is fine. I, I mean, I put in what I thought could still be useful. For small facilities, obviously you're going to have a workshop. Uh, you could do an armory and an auto shop. Between the armory and the auto shop, you do get to repair and craft and build uh, toolkits, and that would give you another slot, but once again, what would you put in this location here? I guess you could put the infirmary back in and then you could have the double primary care effect, but without a, you know, like, what about like right here? I don't know what's taking up this space, but what if we could have a small facility there, then you could have a crafting still. Maybe then there'd be a decent argument for it, but as it stands, I put in a workshop so that we can repair and craft things. I put in a gym. I didn't upgrade the gym because, honestly, you don't really need to. The level one gym is fine. Also, when you upgrade the gym, it does cause one material loss per day. And the main thing I want is the health. I want the 20 health. And then I've got the shooting range once again. You know, no questions asked. Build it, get 20 stamina. It's not like the kitchen. You don't have to feed it food in order to activate it. You don't have to constantly turn it on. It's just 20 stamina. And uh, if we had the uh, applicable mod, we would be able to put in a very awesome mod. In fact, let's just put a fight that in because we don't have anything else. And that is my build. And what I would do over here, I, I would not, look, okay, you could build a farm. That's another option. You could build a farm. I don't like to build farms. In this case, a farm would probably be pretty decent because like uh, I, I could easily replace either the sniper tower or the auto shop with a level three farm. The farm would generate about 12 food when optimized, which would be decent. But I, you know, we're using a hyper community. Our hyper community has super waifu cafeteria squad. So we just don't really need it. So overall, what do I think about this base? I want to like it, 
because it's really unique. But at the same time, I got to give you the honest advice. And my honest advice is that it's it's not as it's not very good. I don't think it's super great. In fact, I would not move out of this base here. This is Weston Builder Supply. Weston Builder Supply is too large, six small. That is way better. I would much rather have that because once again, I can live without all three of these facilities. This one especially, I could just build an infirmary. And like the auto shop, you can just substitute it in. You could take down your trade depot and build an auto shop when you need it. Get what you need, tear the auto shop back down, build your trade depot back in. And like I said, I, I can play without the sniper town. Maybe if you need it, like a larger base would be better. But I would say just stay in Weston Builder Supply. Look at the building cost. Look how much it costs. It costs four people to move in and a thousand influence to get into this base. That is nothing. It's very cheap. It is, it's great. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. Ooh, look at that morale. Looking really nice over there. Definitely enjoy that. But that is my issue here. Uh, another base, I would say, Prescott Fire Station. If you don't have amenities, or if you just don't like using amenities because maybe you think it's too powerful, Prescott Fire Station provides you with water and electricity, uh, saving you from using an outpost, saving you from building a generator and a water thing yourself. Uh, water is honestly not as big of an issue. It's mainly the electricity, and that's because remember that the crafting still, which is a building you definitely want, you definitely want a crafting still, the crafting still gives you water. So I don't even think water is that big of a deal. And then on top of that, what do you even use water for? You basically use water for, for this, crafting the strong painkillers. You can see right here, there is a requirement for water. Other than that, you would just use it for like growing plants. And like I said, uh, you can either use a super waifu cafeteria squad to cut your food down. As you can see here, we're eating very, we're on lethal zone. If you don't believe me, there we are. We're on lethal zone and Look at this, we're only eating 3.875 food per day, even though our community is eight, we should be eating 16 food per day. That's Super Waifu Cafeteria Squad. Two outposts counteracting our food, and that's the issue there. So overall, I think this base is awesome for new players, or I think this map, let's talk about the map and the um, Providence Ridge itself, and let's talk about um, the landmark location. So I think Providence Ridge is pretty good for new players. And the reason for that is because of these two bases here. Rusty Rosie's is often not covered by Plague Hearts, and it's a decent base. It's a pretty good base to get into. And then from there, you can move into Weston Builder Supply, or honestly, you could just stay in Rusty Rosie's. It's a perfectly reasonable base, and it's often not covered by Plague Hearts, even on the Lethal Zone. I'm not sure why that is. But it's just something I notice. When I play here, it tends to not have a, um, oh, wow, I wanted to get the fuel here, but we got ourselves a whole plague horde. So we're not gonna do that, but it's really, really handy. So I still recommend this map. But the thing is, you could probably skip the largest bases in the game here, to be totally honest. I don't think they're that important. Hit, and, and the other thing is Weston Builder Supply, it gives you the same customization options as the container fort. And that's because the container fort is honestly not that good. I know some people love that location, but the truth is that it's just not that good. And that's because eight beds is not a good benefit. Like it's, it's, it's something that you can just ignore. How do you know you can ignore eight beds? Well, just look at my base. I don't build any beds. The shooting range isn't beds, not 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 beds. This is the only thing that gives me beds. And it just gives me two. I have two, like, like look, look how many beds. I'm missing six beds. And look at my morale. We're in the highest tier of morale. Uh, we could get maybe 15 more global morale and technically be capped. There's no benefit to being capped. And I don't have any beds. Beds do not matter. That is something that is very important. Like your bases can be way better if you do not build beds. And that's why that is not a relevant bonus. Anyways, let's talk about, um, oh, let me get rid of these guys. The other thing that I don't like about this, this map, like I said, this map, it's like, I like Providence Ridge, don't get me wrong. 
but there's a lot of things I don't like about it. One, I don't like the amount of driving. The amount of driving I find to be a bit frustrating. But another thing I don't like is the landmark location is just, it's really not that good. I'm going to be completely honest. It's one of the weakest, in fact, it's probably the second weakest. The only the only one that's worse is the Mayor Valley one, the um, the windmill area that just gives you power for different requirements. And that's because all this does really is you can pick between basically a sniper tower benefit, which if I did, if I if I got the sniper tower benefit, which I mean I probably would, I could replace the sniper tower. In fact, I only chose the sniper tower to not use the benefit. For some reason, this is jammed still. I, I, I'm not sure what... Oh, never mind. We can do it. Anyways, the point is that this gives us a sniper tower option and a recon. It's okay. It's not great. I, I don't... It's probably the second best choice. The best choice I would go with is just the shelter strategy, and that's specifically for the beta. If you're not on the beta, this one is worse, and that's because right over here, when our threat is high, we get a morale penalty. Well, if you're not playing on the beta, you don't have the split between noise and threat level. My threat level is low, because what increases your threat level in the beta are infestations. So, this is actually not bad on the beta, because you can have the extra morale. You get an extra 10 morale and four beds. So let's go ahead and activate it. But as long as you, but you have to have a low threat. Now, if you're playing on the normal game, your threat level is your noise. And a, a noisy base is a productive base. A noisy base contains all of the best facilities. So you should just say, screw the noise. You don't want to play around. Don't play around noise. Build a powerful base. But on the beta, and when eventually when these beta effects come to the normal game, you'll be able to benefit from it as well. Where as long as you keep the infestations clear, you can have a low threat. And then, yeah, this is actually not a half bad bonus, because then you'll get four beds and ten morale. But otherwise, even four beds and ten morale, that's still not a super good benefit for, what do you call it, your, your outpost. It's like, meh. I would still rather have cell towers because radio yeah. cooldown, Empty. and I'd still rather have um, some food outposts. You know, maybe one one food outpost upgraded to level two to counteract our food losses because we have super waifu cafeteria squad. If you didn't have that, sure, you might build extra food outposts because on a high difficulty, you eat a ton of food, so you know you do want to counteract your food, and you don't want to build a facility for it because you want to build facilities that make you stronger. And what, 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 what is the point of the outposts other than to neutralize resource losses? Well, the most important resource loss is food. Oh, okay, we can grab. Oh, okay, there we go. So we just produced a large load. There we go. Let's go and build. There we go. We're, we're, we're really rolling in the materials now. We got tons. We got materials for days, I guess. There we go. Okay, so we've got this landmark strategy running. Um, so as you can see here, we get four beds, and then we get plus or minus morale with either low or high threat. Threat level is minimal. Once again, you're not going to have this if you're not playing on the beta. You would This would be your threat level. You'd have a maximum threat level, so you'd actually be losing morale. And you can see right down here, if I scroll down, where is it? Um, there it is. New... New Hope Church morale bonus, 10 morale to everybody. Now it takes us up to like 78. And like I said, it's it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's will I take it? Sure, whatever. But once again, it just doesn't light me on fire. It's just not all that great. But let me go ahead and can give my concluding thoughts. Lumber, Lumber Guard, Lumber Mill, it's an interesting base. It's very unique. There's no doubt about that. And I like that it's unique. I like that it's got some different things going on. It has a different mold. But, you know, sometimes being, being different is interesting. But being different is not the same thing as being good. And the issue with Lunderguard is that it's very unbalanced. That's the honest issue with it, is that five large is overkill. You don't need five large, especially at the cost of only three small and only three small indoor. No crafting still. That I really that really bothers me about this base. No crafting still. The crafting still is so good if you're not using an ultra cash strategy. And the unique thing about the base, the ability to produce 
lumber, you build it too slowly for it to really be a relevant factor. So basically everything that's unique about the base is interesting, but either unbalanced or just too little and not really worth what you get. The much more balanced base of Weston Builder Supply that has two large, six small, and like I said, two large is, it's just perfect. Yeah, you could probably use three. Three, I like three large, but two large, it's just fine. And six small is fantastic. Sure, I do like, I do like three five. Three large, five small, I think is just perfect. But this is still good. And that's what I think about it overall. So my recommendation is, I would say, yeah, try out Lunderguard just because it is interesting. You know, you might be able to have some fun messing, mucking around with different facilities and whatnot. But it's not, it's definitely not what I would consider a forever community kind of base. And I would recommend, yes, go to Providence Ridge. It is a pretty cool map, but go to Rusty Rosie's. Go to Weston Builder Supply, and if you don't have a, uh, amenities, so you're, you do have problems with electricity and power, then sure, give Prescott Fire Station a consideration. But in terms of just what is good and what is not good, you, this, this base is, is really just not that great. That's the main issue. And the big penalty that this thing causes is, oh no, all the zombies are gonna show up. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, you don't even need to defend your base, especially on the beta. On the beta, the, uh, the zombies can't even attack your base in the, in the form of a siege, unless you allow an infestation to send an attack there. So you can get around all the, bed, the disadvantages. The issue is that it's just not strong enough. Anyways, that concludes our tour of Providence Ridge. We are going to be moving into Trumbull Valley next and review the Trumbull Valley bases. And then after that, we'll just do some other fun playthroughs. Maybe I'll do another retouring of the base. In maybe once a year I'll do it because who knows? Maybe something changes. Probably not, though. Anyways, let me know what you think down in the comment section. Are you a Lunderguard lumber mill enjoyer or not? Do you agree with my analysis or do you disagree? Do you think I was maybe a little too hard on the base? How would you build Lunderguard lumber mill? Let me know down in the comment section. Anyways, till next time, subscribe to my channel so that you can see the continuation of the Hyper Community World Tour moving in to Trumbull Valley. Don't miss the base reviews there. Anyways, until next time, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.